Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. As we continue to explore the alternate win conditions on Magic Arena, today's win condition of choice is a door to nothingness. A 5 mana artifact enters the battlefield tapped, pay 2 of every color, so that's 10 mana total, tap and sacrifice door to nothingness, and then a target player loses the game. So that's going to be our alternate win condition. Now this makes the most sense in a ramp strategy where we can get to 10 mana in the first place. And looking at our mana base, our deck looks like just a blue-green deck. So how do we fix our mana to actually activate the door using all those five different colors? That's where the world tree will come in handy. As soon as we have six or more lands in play, then all lands can tap for one mana of any color. So the world tree will fix our mana for us. And then as you may have noticed, we have Door to Nothingness in the sideboard instead of in the main deck, since we're going to plan to search it up with Karn, the Great Creator's minus 2 ability. That way we essentially have 4 copies of Door to Nothingness in our deck, without actually having 4 copies of Door in our deck, since it's a pretty bad card to play early on in the game. And then we can also potentially search up one copy of Chromatic Lantern with Karn. In case we didn't draw our World Tree, we can still use a Lantern to fix our colors to activate Door to Nothingness to win the game. Then our other options with Karn include Tormod Script for Graveyard Hate. We've got a Cityscape Leveler to destroy opposing permanents. We've got the Great Henge for a bit of a life gain and card draw. Also synergizes nicely with the Dinosaurs in this deck. And then Portal to Phyrexia, another nice curve topper. Since most of our deck is dedicated to ramping, we don't have a ton of win conditions in the main deck, so we can afford to include some expensive cards in the sideboard. And speaking of sideboard cards, we also have Kahira, the Orphan Guard, as our companion, since all our creatures happen to be either dinosaurs or beasts, so we're free to play Kahira as companion to give our creatures plus one plus one and vigilance, so that's also a nice perk of this deck. Of course, it does eat up a sideboard slot that we would otherwise use with Karn, so there is a slight drawback if you don't want to play Kahira and maybe want to make room for some one mana ramp creatures like Grazer or maybe the alchemy card, the Kami at one mana, then you could also potentially cut Kahira and make room for an extra sideboard slot for Karn, maybe play an extra Graph Digger's Cage as Graveyard Hate or maybe play some other interaction. And then the rest of our deck includes plenty of ramp, starting at 2 mana with Explore and Grow Spiral to draw a card and put an extra land in play. At 3 mana we get to the Dinosaurs, including 4 copies of Topiary Stomper, which can find any basic and put it on the battlefield tapped when it enters, on a 4-4 with Vigilance, but it can only attack and block as soon as we have 7 or more lands in play, so it does take a while to get going, but with all the ramp in this deck we can usually start attacking with the Stomper around turn 4 or turn 5 at the latest. And then we also have four copies of a Wayward Swordtooth, a 5-5 with Ascend, meaning we gain the City's Blessing as soon as we have 10 or more permanents in play. And then with the City's Blessing, the Swordtooth can also start attacking and blocking, letting us play an additional land each turn regardless. So that's another way of ramping, because our deck has 28 lands total, which is a pretty high number, just to make sure we can always put extra lands in play with Spiral, Explore and Swordtooth, so we're actually ramping. And then to help hit our land drops, we also have two copies of Verdant Mastery, which I put in the 4-drop slot since we can cast it for 4 mana, get to search for 4 basic lands, our opponent will get one of them, we get two of them and another one in our hand, or we can cast it for 6 mana, in which case the opponent doesn't get any lands, we get to still put 2 in play and then 2 in hand. And then of course Karn, our main win condition. And then to further protect our door to nothingness, we also have four copies of an offer you can't refuse. A one mana instant, countering target non-creature spell. Its controller does get two treasure tokens, but as soon as we have Karn in play, we can shut down all activated abilities of opposing artifacts, so the opponent won't even be able to sacrifice their treasure tokens, so it's not a huge downside in those cases. And then at 5 mana, another fun addition is Traverse the Outlands. A 5 mana sorcery, search your library for up to X basic land cards where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, and put them on the battlefield tapped. So a turn 3 Swordtooth can set up a turn 4 Traverse, finding 5 lands, which is pretty efficient for just 5 mana. And then a Stomper can also set up a turn 4 Traverse, finding 4 lands instead, so still a great way to ramp. And then we can sink all that extra mana into a large Hydroid Crisis. X, a blue and a green, will enter with X plus one plus one counters on it, has Flying and Trample, and when we cast it, regardless of it getting countered or not, we gain half X life and draw half X cards, so it can be another great source of card advantage. And then our mana base needs to 
include plenty of basic lanes since we want to search them up with traverse even in the late game so we've got six islands and ten forests one of each of the channel lanes for added interaction castle ventress is also quite nice as a mana sink to scry towards our karn to eventually find our door to nothingness and then for added mana fixing for breeding pool and then of course four copies of the world tree so yeah that's our blue green dino door deck well, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, this hand seems keepable. Turn two, we can uh, explore, and then keep up offer you can't refuse. Play the island, opponent on some sort of Esper deck. And a Bankbuster is fine, no need to counter. So... Play this on blue, mastery for 4 mana. And then giving the opponent a forest is probably not very helpful for them. Other than of course making mana. Okay. So can set up a relatively large crisis or can keep ramping with another mastery first. And keep up an offer at the same time. Opponent passes. So six mana mastery. Opponent draws with a bank buster. And then now we can use a sword tooth to get some of these extra lands in play before setting up creases. The only concerns at this card spell taking it away. And then we're waiting for Karn. Bankbuster draws once again. And another Bangbuster, sure. Okay, Sawtooth. Let's spiral. And there's Karn. So we can play Karn. Still have three mana left. Not quite enough to play our Door to Nothingness. But it's probably okay to search it up since we have a counter spell to protect against the discard spell. And then I should just pass instead of putting Kahira in hand. Okay, dinosaur down. Karn also prevents the opponent from activating Bank Buster in the first place. Which your opponent's trying to figure out here as they read Karn. It's gonna be a Jace to try and mill us. That's fine. Should be able to win with door, even in our upkeep. As long as we resolve it here. Focus on the facts. So that is going to mill 15. Just have to be careful with crisis, so probably wouldn't be playing that out. So play door with counterspell backup. And we can search for... Some other win condition, perhaps. A leveler. And uh, put Kahira in hand. And pass it back. I guess I could still play Kahira. Opponent's looking at our door. And oof, Void Rent. That one's uncounterable. Yeah, that gets our door. Okay, so we're gonna have to play Leveler and Crisis anyway. And then we can counter a future Jace. Kahira cut down, that's fine. And another Jace. We are not gonna let Resolve anymore. The treasure is also not very good with Karn out anyway. So, Crisis versus Leveler. Probably start with a leveler. Plus on the treasure and pass a turn. Awaken. And back up Karn. Just gonna keep on plussing on the treasures. Evil cannot withstand a right 
attack for eight. And a Wandering Emperor can exile our leveler, that's too bad. Maybe should have been digging for a counterspell with Krasis first. So they're not a dedicated mill deck, more just like a Asper control deck. Opponent made a Samurai token with Emperor, that's interesting. Okay, cast a Krasis for 10 maybe. And then I could keep up Offer versus playing another Dinosaur. I guess Emperor's gonna minus on Leveler here, gain 2. So there was merit to just playing another creature out. But I would like to protect my Krasis. We have 14 cards remaining. There could be a Sweeper incoming as well. Day of Judgment. Okay, we can still at least uh, unearth our leveler. She can also take out the Emperor. Can minus Karn. And what do we want to get? Portal to Phyrexia, probably our best option. So if I play Portal, then we'll have six mana remaining. Can play my two dinosaurs out. And yeah, opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Spiral into Stomper. Set up a lot of mana for a large crisis. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one Swamp and Curtains, so that can maybe have a peak. But uh, can ramp a little bit in the meantime. Can maybe take our crisis. Gonna be a deadly dispute instead. All right. Opponent closes the curtains. And now with an extra land, I'm kind of liking Swordtooth over Stomper since we'll be able to ramp twice with it if it survives. And then Krasis can keep the cards flowing. Mind Drain to make us discard too. Alright, hang on to Krasis, I guess. And then sadly picked up a tap land, so can draw as many cards with Krasis now. Still gonna play it for X equals 3 to just draw a card, I think. In case there's more discard in our future. Well, if they make me discard too, they can still discard Karn if I hold World Tree, so might as well play it out. Next turn I could put Kahira in hand, play it if I'm empty-handed, if not Karn can probably find something useful. May not want to get Door until I can play it right away, but at the very least we could plus Karn on the treasure to take it out. Alright, Flunk kills Krasis, that's fine. And a Power Ward to take out Swordtooth. Found another one. Yeah, still gonna play Karn and then just plus on the treasure, I think. Now with the Swordtooth I can consider getting a Great Henge again with Karn, since we would get a nice 5 mana discount. But I may just get Door and put it in play. And then we just need to hit a couple more land drops to win, thanks to the World Tree fixing our mana. Sorin can make a Vampire. Stomper the draw. So yeah, we definitely have options. Could play both Dinosaurs. Gets me up to 7 mana. Still kind of far from winning with our door. If I play Swordtooth, then I'm going to be a little bit short of playing Great Henge afterwards, since it's going to cost me 4 mana. So what else can we get? Could just get the Lantern for a tiny bit of ramp, but then Karn's going to be under pressure from the Vampire as well. So maybe we just plus Karn, play double Dino, and then next turn get Henge. Sure. That way we keep our loyalty high. Oh, 
could turn out poorly for opponent has removal for planeswalkers. But we've seen some discard effects so far. Which may be worth playing around instead. Surin makes another vampire on the way out. And there's another one, makes sense. So the flying vampires can pressure Karn. And then we have to decide if we want to get a henge, get a door to nothingness. Since we may only get one activation out of it. If I draw land, I could play henge, put Kaihira in hand, still play it and draw a card. That's kind of nice. Disciple, but we're empty handed. And Karn takes two. Picked up an explorer instead. Could maybe explore first, see if we pick up a land. If I do, then we're pretty close to winning with door, and I would still be able to play it here. So let's try that instead. Alright, breeding pool. Yeah, let's just get door. Play door. And then we're a couple lines away. Can pressure Sorin. A double lock with the vampires on Stomper makes sense, but we're just gonna let Sorin go. And then we just need two more lands in play. Don't expect Black to have answers to my door to nothingness. And hopefully we don't die in the meantime. Most of our draws are either ramp cards or card draw in some way, so... Okay, Crisis will do. So X equals 6, draws us 3 cards. Definitely one of our better top decks. Play Soaring City. And next turn with a land so we could win the game. Opponent plays Abandoned Mire instead of trying to get back Soren. And a go blank, pretty effective. Gets my last two cards and exiles my graveyard. But an untapped land of the top is still game over. There might be a sweeper incoming. Nope. And there's a forest of the top. Open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems fine. We'll need to find some blue mana eventually, and a bit more ramp could also come in handy. Since right now, double Swordtooth isn't really ramping us. Unless we find a traverse. Turn one supplier, so points a graveyard deck. Looks like a self-mill deck. Alright, Burden Mastery could come in handy. So I can play it for 4 mana next turn. Founding cast the cards from hand. Opponent's gonna mill themselves. Could at some point also play Karn and get Thormod Script. Opponent's got a Silver Smote Ghoul and a Scrap Heap Scrounger to get back, so Thormod Script's not a priority, but of course I could play it and not sacrifice it yet. Which may be the safer move. Although then we're probably going to lose Karn to the incoming attack, so it's going to take a while to find a backup to get our win condition. Yeah, let's just mastery. And then I can give my opponent a forest. Okay, next turn I can play double sword tooth at the very least. Opponent Milt Creeping Chill, which gets back the uh, Silver Smote Ghoul, and then Amalgam also returns. So the damage is gonna pile up quickly. Another Creeping Chill. Flashback Gaze. And then Founding can also get back their uh, Glimpse to Mill for 10. So half of the opponent's library already in their graveyard. A 
get back Ghoul, which triggers Amalgam, which we'll get back at the end of our turn. So getting a Tormod script at this point doesn't seem all that helpful. So we'll just play double Dinosaur and then I can still Spiral. And at least we've got the City's Blessing. So I can block the three-part creatures. There's a glimpse. Wouldn't be able to counter it even if we draw our one-mana counter here. It's another Creeping Chill milled. And an Archimiba. Also see Demonic Embrace to give creatures flying. So we're on a real clock here. So our opponent will be able to get back Silver Smote Ghoul and Amalgam but still want to prevent the most damage since I don't want to mill them for another three. And then what does Karn do for us? We've got two of them now. Next turn our opponent can Demonic Embrace on a Supplier and with another Narcomiba that would be lethal. So I have to Karn and get Tormod script so they won't be able to replay Demonic Embrace. I I will not stop. And then let's see here. Yeah, I have to just sacrifice this now before the Amalgam gets back. Put Kahira in hands and we'll chill here. So the Narcomibas might be able to get there. Can okay, so we'll use Karn to get Great Henge to gain some life back. And I'll block Supplier now. Okay, at least no. Creeping Chill to get back the Ghoul, unless they can hardcast it. Secret Keeper. Another Narcomiba. Get back Amalgam. And play Secret Keeper. Opponent can still get back the Haunted Dead by discarding. So there's going to be a lot of flying creatures knocking at our door. Can get Great Henge played for 4 mana. And uh, take it from there. Or we could... I don't think uh, Portal to Phyrexia is good enough. Leveler also only takes out one Narcomiba. So yeah, I think Great Henge is our best bet. I will not lose another friend. Play Henge. Play Kahira. See what we draw. Krasis could still maybe rescue us. Traverse I cannot cast. Yeah, I think we're dead now. Can attack for six with a sword tooth, and then opponent brings back haunted dead and has five in the air exactly. Yeah, still kind of a close game. Opponents mill their entire library. And we almost had enough here to set up the door. Just needed one extra turn pretty much. So there's haunted dead. Discard Silver Smote and Amalgam, which also returns. So yeah, they have uh, a little bit of damage to spare, potentially, if they time that better. Alright, GG's. This probably would have been a better matchup for Graph Digger's Cage, as opposed to Tormod Script, since we need that persistent graveyard hate. And there's one more Creeping Chill somewhere. A recycler, not sure what it does. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems functional. Just need to hit a couple more land drops naturally. But we've got a lot of lands in the deck. Opponent with a Temple of Plenty. Okay. So we're on track to Stomper into Traverse. 
Got a lot of ramp, just missing some of the payoff cards. Think Stomper still. Get an island. And a Relic of Legends from our opponents. We're gonna run out of basics pretty soon here. Hit for four. So yeah, just need a World Tree and a Karn, and then we're good to go. Opponent's got a Timeless Lotus, so they're also ramping nicely. Okay, let us maybe go for Explore. Could also Traverse first to thin out the deck and then Explore. Gives us a higher chance of finding something useful. And there's Karn. Well, that can shut down the Lotus and the Relic next turn. But that may be too late, we'll see. Lord Xander. Okay, so discard two cards. That's not too difficult. Traverse and Mastery can go. And then play Karn, hope it resolves. And then what do we get? We've got 10 mana to work with. Could just get my door, play it, and then next turn Lantern to help activate it. I think getting the door in place probably is a priority, and then we'll find a world tree or lantern at some point. And then Kahira can help protect Karn as well. Okay. So Karn shuts down Lotus and Relic. And next turn, if we get a lantern, we should still have enough mana to win with the door. So if Xander dies, what happens? So we don't want Xander to die, so we'll just jump with Kahira. Oath of Teferi can flicker Xander. That's fine. And then minus... Get our lantern. Play it. Open the door, get on the floor, everybody walk the dinosaur. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential actually. We've got World Tree to fix our mana, and then Stomper into Traverse. Makes a lot of mana to hopefully Karn minus get our door. And then now we could Spiral on two as well. So this is close to the ideal start, but we'll see if our opponent has some aggression here. Looks like maybe a blue-red wizard's deck. It's gonna be a sprite dragon, could also be a phoenix deck. So yeah, those can add up quickly. But at least they shouldn't have too many ways to kill a 4-4 stomper early on. It's also not the biggest threat. Okay. So next turn Traverse gets us to enough mana to maybe Karn minus play our door right away. Play with Fire Goes Face. So another 4 damage incoming. Yeah, not sure if we can survive two more turns. It's gonna be close. Can hit for four. At this point we don't care if Stomper dies. May need to get a Great Henge to gain some life with uh, Karn Minus. As our opponent's hitting us for nine here at least. And a play with fire is just gonna be game here. Yeah, GG's. The updated Symmetry Sage does not mess around. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. 
Should be able to find another green source to play Stomper eventually. Could also potentially cast a turn 3 Mastery. Okay, so we're off to a rampy start. Just missing some of our finishers like Karn. Runestone should not really matter here. Okay, uh, Stomper versus 4 Mana Mastery. I guess we'll just Stomper so we don't ramp the opponents. And then next turn we can play a 6 Mana Mastery if we'd like. We've got our World Tree, so just waiting for Karn. A Warlock class can draw. And then we can attack for 4 with a Stomper next turn already. There's Karn. I think we still ramp with Mastery, so I can play Karn minus and play Door right away. Attack for four. Yeah, we're gonna have just enough for Karn minus play Door. And then we may be able to activate it the turn after. Field of Ruin is an interesting twist that can blow up our World Tree, so then Karn needs to get the uh, Chromatic Lantern to fix our mana. That's fine. I uh, think that's still worth it. And then I don't expect Mono Black to have removal for artifacts once in play. Otherwise I could wait to keep up my one mana counter. Alright, so opponent's gonna Field of Ruin. And then I'm not gonna be able to win on the following turn since I need to search up Lantern and cast it. But it should leave us in a good position. Get our Islands to keep up Offer. Get to untap. So, get Chromatic Lantern, play Lantern, and then play Dino. Can put Kahira in hand as well. And then next turn we should still have the win. And our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that could use a couple more lands, but there's of course a lot of lands we can draw. And then the curve of maybe Stomper into Traverse could be great. So we'll give it a shot. Okay, Karns are win condition, so yeah, just missing the mana to enable it. Bones blue-black, thing in the ice. Could turn into an issue later. Okay, there's a land at least, so let's stomp her. Get an extra blue source. And then with a land, maybe traverse, but we'll see. So they need to cast four instants or sorceries, and then it flips into a 7-8, which also bounces all our creatures. Can play another stomper, and then keep up our counterspell. At least if they bounce Stomper, we get some more value. So we are slowly ramping. Next turn, ideally with a land, I could traverse with Counterspell Backup in case something goes wrong. Here, yeah, Rusko. That happens. Makes a Midnight Clock and a Hard Evidence triggers Thing in the Ice. That also works. So now the coast is clear for Traverse, get four lanes. And that gets us pretty close to Karn play door right away. Could have also gone for Karn to shut down the Midnight Clock and the Clue Token, but... Getting four lanes in play seemed better. Another hard evidence. Trigger Rusko, trigger Thing in the Ice. Opponent goes digging. The concern with playing Karn and not getting a door right away is that Karn would die to Thing in the Ice. 
So we're kind of forced to minus four door and play it, ideally with offer backup for a bit of insurance. So yeah, if we draw land, we could make that happen. Just another gross spiral. So I don't think I'm going to go for Karn yet. Could double gross spiral or just play a large crisis, which also is likely to draw me a bunch of land. So let's go for x equals 6, since there's no real difference between 6 or 7 in terms of uh, card draw. Okay, found our castle. And then we'll keep up spiral slash an offer. Opponent sacks another clue. Just double checking here, it says non-horror creatures. Don't have any horror creatures. Can hit for eight as well. Opponents throwing a crab under the bus. And our opponent's gonna cut down their own creatures since they didn't have any other targets. Just to trigger a thing in the ice on Rusko. Okay. Take four. So we've got a bit of a mana advantage. But uh, we'll see how this plays out. Another Rusko. That's acceptable. Make Midnight Clock. Can they flip thing in the ice? Well, let's Spiral. They might have a counter spell to transform thing. At least they didn't get to attack with it then. And a spell pierce. Alright. Thing transforms. And then now the coast might be clear for Karn, play door with counter spell backup. And then it doesn't matter if Karn dies. We'll have to discard to hand size, Swordtooth can go alongside Mastery. Okay, we have 10 mana in play to activate door to win the game. So opponent needs to find land destruction for world tree or interaction for door or deal 19 damage. Rusko makes a third to midnight clock. Opponent cannot tap midnight clock for as long as we control Karn, so they're gonna take it out first. And another thing in the ice doesn't do it. And a consign to bounce. Okay, their last card is nothing relevant. So this could do it. Get to untap. And in our upkeep, we'll activate our door to nothingness. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody walk the dinosaur. Let's go. Get to see our blue-green dinosaur ramp deck in action. And while it's never going to be a very competitive deck in this historic meta game, you can sort of take a look at the game against the Blue Red Wizards. That's how most games are going to go if you're trying to play this on the ranked ladder. It is still very fun and satisfying getting to put a ton of lands in play, cast some big beefy dinosaurs, and then Door to Nothingness is a pretty sweet alternate win condition at the end of the day. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.